he fed them with the finest wheat and satisfied them with honey from the rock. With all the saints, with prophets and martyrs, with holy Mary and Joseph, with those who came before and those who will follow, we gather here today, one body in the Lord, a sign and sacrament of Christ. With all in need, the poor and forsaken, to whom the innkeeper shuts the door, with those who are the least, yet first in the kingdom, we gather here today, one body in the Lord, a sign and sacrament of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Father, Lord, 
of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. This wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifice young bulls of peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. 
precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bones. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Zion, praise your Savior. Praise your Savior. Praise your leader and shepherd in hymns and canticles. Praise him as much as you can, for he is beyond all praising, and you will never be able to praise him as he merits. But today, a particular praise is put before us, the living and life-giving bread that, without any doubt, was given to the twelve at the table during the Holy Supper. Therefore, let our praise be full and resounding and our souls rejoicing full of delight and beauty, for this is the festival day to commemorate the first institution of this table. So we, in accordance with his holy directions, consecrate bread and wine to be salvation's victim. Christ's followers know by faith that bread is changed into his flesh and wine into his blood. Yet Christ remains entire under each species.
The communicant receives the complete Christ, uncut, unbroken, and undivided. Whether one receive or a thousand, the one receives as much as the thousand, nor is Christ diminished by being received. Last of all, if the sacrament is broken, have no doubt. Remember there is as much in a fragment as in an unbroken host. There is no division of the reality, but only a breaking of the sign. Nor does the breaking diminish the condition or size of the one hidden under the sign. Jesus, good shepherd and true bread, have mercy on us. Feed us and guard us. Grant that we may find happiness in the land of the living. You know all things, can do all things, and feed us here on earth. Make us your guest in heaven, co-heirs with you, and companions of heaven's citizens. Amen. Alleluia. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen. I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
in Germany, an artist designed an unusual door for a church. He divided the door into four panels, and each of those panels depicts several symbols referring to a gospel event. The first panel has six water jars, referring to the miracle at Cana, where Jesus changed water into wine. The second panel depicts five loaves of bread and two fish, and it refers to the miracle in Capernaum, where Jesus multiplied the loaves of bread and fish. The third panel depicts 13 people seated at a table, and obviously it is referring to the Last Supper. And the fourth panel depicts three people also seated at a table, and it refers to that Easter supper on the night of our Lord's resurrection when he appeared and broke bread with those two disciples in Emmaus. The artist chose these four events in the gospel because they are related to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. They relate to Jesus' total gift of himself in the form of bread and wine. And that is what we celebrate today this most awesome of all sacraments, that of the Eucharist, of the most holy body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's take a closer look at those four panels in that door and see how they do indeed relate to what we do right now in this Mass. We'll begin with that first miracle, the wedding feast at Cana where Jesus turned water into wine. Sometimes modern people have difficulty or trouble seeing how water could have been changed into wine. And yet, the early Christians had no trouble whatsoever with this miracle. You see, they lived off the soil and they saw something similar to it happen every summer in their vineyards. The grapevines drew water out of the ground and with the sun changed water into wine. But the important thing about the miracle at the wedding feast in Cana is not how Jesus worked that miracle, but why did he work it? Was it merely to save a young married couple the embarrassment of running out of wine at their wedding feast? The artist of the door suggests that Jesus had a deeper reason. Jesus wanted to prepare his disciples for that last supper when he indeed would change wine into blood. That now brings us to the second panel. It shows five loaves and two fish, again referring to the miracle of the multiplication of those loaves and fish. Again, some modern Christians might have difficulty in really accepting this miracle. Again, the early Christians did not have any trouble with it whatsoever. They saw something similar happen each year in their wheat fields. You see, in the spring, they would plant five bushels of wheat. And by the time the summer had ended, the wheat would have multiplied into 500 bushels. But again, the important thing here is not how Jesus worked this miracle, but why did Jesus work this miracle? Was it merely out of compassion for this hungry crowd Again, the artist suggests another reason. The miracle gave Jesus a t chance to tell the people that he would soon feed them more marvelously than he had just done in this multiplication of loaves and fish. He would feed them even more marvelously than Moses did 
during those 40 years that his, their ancestors traveled about in the desert. Jesus indeed said to the people, what Moses gave you was not bread from heaven. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give him is my very flesh. That leads us to the third panel, and it shows 13 people seated at a table referring to the Last Supper. At the Last Supper, Jesus does more than change water into wine. He changes wine into his very own blood, and he does more than multiply loaves of bread. He changes bread into his very own body, his living flesh. We just heard Mark just describe that in today's gospel. And while they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. And then he took a cup, gave thanks to God, and handed it to them. And they all drank from it. And Jesus said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you and for many, my blood which seals God's covenant. And that leads us now to the final panel of that door, and it shows three people seated at a table, referring to that Easter night supper that Jesus ate in Emmaus with two of his disciples. The artist again interprets the Emmaus supper as the very first celebration of the Eucharist. Luke St. Luke describes it this way. Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Does that sound familiar? That description in Emmaus sounds exactly like that what Jesus said at the Last Supper and what he did. That artist's door is a wonderful summary of the Lord's Supper as it developed through the course of the living gospels. It traces it from Cana, where it was prefigured, brings us to Capernaum, where it was first promised, takes us to Jerusalem at the Last Supper, where it is instituted, and finally to the small village of Emmaus, where it is celebrated for the first time. May I close with a suggestion for all of us. In a few moments, in the communion rite, when you stand before the Eucharistic minister who holds up the sacred host and says to you, the body of Christ, try to realize in the most special way who it is you really are receiving. It is not a mere symbol. It is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It is the living body of Christ. It is the same Christ who was born in Bethlehem, the same Jesus who suffered and died on that cross, it was the same Jesus who rose from the dead. So when you think about it that way, it's so incredible, it's hard to imagine. But it's easy for us to take it for granted. We need to place our minds and hearts always with Jesus, especially in the greatest gift that he gives us, in his most holy and blessed sacrament, his holy body and blood. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our gracious God hears our every cry, we now present our needs. For the church, for those who make up the body of most blessed sacrament, and for, for those faithful members of our community who are not Catholic, but accompany their families to worship here each weekend, we pray. Lord, for, hear our prayer. For our ancestors who feasted on manna in the desert, and for those who in the desert of their lives this day hunger for the food of the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the return to civil discourse in our state, for our elected officials, for those who lost their bid for election, and for all of us, to set an example of renewed civility, kindness, and justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for our new graduates, that they be blessed with good moral, spiritual, and financial opportunities as they enter the next part of their lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the body of Christ without food, shelter, or medical attention, for those whose basic human needs are not being met, for those hoping for a better future for themselves and their children, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, for those estranged from their families or mourning the loss of a loved one, for those who must move far from their families for work, and for those serving in the military, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Norman Walters and David Erdman, whose funerals were held this week, we also especially remember John Musa, Henry and Peggy Richter, and Ralph Muir. For Parker Aaron Schwister and Samuel James Duchek, baptized into the body of Christ this weekend. For the people of most blessed sacrament community, and for those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you sent your Son Jesus to be our teacher and Savior. Lead us to follow him more closely and come to everlasting life. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace. And signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bonded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth Sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God.
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Benedict, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the 
Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please, please kneel. given them bread from heaven, having all sweetness within it. Together the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. 